Hello, my name is Tony Vera Achebaidia. I have been recording for over 22 years. The police, celebrities, you name it, I do it. I am um, not one of those that hates cops. I'm actually pro-cop. I just don't like the bad ones. And this documentary is to show you how the Santa Monica Police and the uh, Santa Monica City Council actually lied to a federal judge to get a summary judgment against me with all lies. And this video will prove the lies they told. I am not anti-cop at all. I am pro-cop. Uh, I'll show you step by step on who I am, but I'm not against the police. I'm against bad police. So sit back and uh, watch the uh, documentary on this uh, horrible incident that happened to me, and the summary judgment will be at the end of this video. This is the cop who started uh, Santa Monica Police Officer Mora, who turns off his body cam when he wants to. This is all about him. Can't go anywhere. You can stay right here in the corner, but you can't go anywhere. You need to watch 360. You're picking up people from uh, the north. See that, Joe? All right, cool. Hey guys, so we're just gonna hold it here. We're watching their backs. You're an amazing officer, Sergeant. Uh, yes, sir. You respect the, the First Amendment at LAX. Yes, sir. You, uh, you're the one that got the CIT, the Fascist Submission Team. Yep. Why are you so wonderful? You know, it's uh, ever since I was little, you know, it's always do the right thing. You play sports, you know, you always want to be doing the right thing, show people to do the right stuff. And as long as you do the right stuff, that's all that really matters. You're treated better with respect and dignity. Yeah, but you're amazing because you actually uh, learned the First Amendment and you, you passed it around to all the other cops. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's uh, it's important to, to you know, this is what we, we stand up for. It's the Constitution and the constitutional rights. So, you know, one of the, the biggest ones is the First Amendment of the Constitution. So, you know, why not pass along to everybody? Well, you're one of my favorite cops, man, at LAX, man. Tony, you're the man. No, you're the man. You're the man, Tony. Thank you. All right, Tony. I want to become an LAX airport police officer. Uh, what, do, what do I have to do? Thank you for your interest in airport police. In order to apply to become an airport police officer, you need to be at least 20 and a half years of age to apply. You need to be a U.S. citizen or be in the process of obtaining your citizenship. You need to have a valid California driver's license, and you also need to have a high school diploma or equivalent. And what's the cutoff age? There is no maximum cutoff age. And what about the criminal record? You can't have any felonies to apply. Some misdemeanors uh, are okay, and it's taken on a case-by-case -case basis, and they will be reviewed by a background investigator. And you go to the same academy as LAPD does, right? Correct. We go through the same academy as LAPD. It is a six-month academy. And uh, what, what's all this stuff here? So this is just promotional material for airport police. We also have um, the youth cadet program that's out here recruiting. Okay, uh, thank you for your time, you know? Appreciate it. Let's keep one thing in mind. This is the summary judgment they got on me based on lies, but I was recording a woman being taken down brutally by the Santa Monica police at a George Floyd protest. This is what the incident was about. Uh, and people fail to realize that Protests, why are you taking this girl down the way you are? All these cops on this woman. And I was getting the footage, and they called in the curfew way too early. It was a 2 o'clock curfew, which they're being sued on, but uh, it was actually like 1.56. So the fool with the microphone was way too early on the curfew. I've been recording cops for many, many years. And that was my focus. Uh, most of the protesters went back to Venice. It was over. It was a few thousand protesters, peaceful. Uh, when the cops said they were calling the curfew, and as you can see, it's only a few people left. It wasn't like they were hanging around to um, break windows and loot stores. These were peaceful protesters, and uh, you'll see upcoming clips of me in Venice with these peaceful protesters. Watch the clip, people. So as you can see, I don't hate cops. This is a summary judgment that the Santa Monica police got on me and the judge went for it based on lies. This was a seven hour protest in Venice, very peaceful protest. And it got to the outskirts of Santa Monica. At that point, 
Sarah Monica claimed they had a 2, o'clock, 2 p.m. curfew. So most of the crowd went back to Venice. There was thousands of people. Um, there's one girl there, as you see in the video here, uh, protesting First Amendment, you know. She's all dead. But they used this 2 o'clock curfew thing to get rid of the crowd. Uh, this is like late in the day. Most of the crowd was down in Venice. I have footage of that coming up. Um, very peaceful. But they used this curfew uh, thing. And when they called the curfew at 2 o'clock, that's when the cops started grabbing the, grabbing the female. Curfew law was in effect, which is, uh, which is uh, unconstitutional. They're being sued for that right now. Um, but the guy called it four minutes too early. And I proved that in this video. So basically, you know, if you're not counting me as media, fine. Uh, even with the woman here, you know, you had no right to put your hands on me or her because it wasn't two o'clock. The curfew started at two, and uh, you started four minutes to two. The guy messed up calling the curfew completely. So you can see her with the cops. The cops grabbed her from behind, so you got she got mad. So I just figured. They're using all this force on this female. And uh, I was uh, across the street when I saw it. I ran over and tried to get the footage. Most of the crowd went back to Venice. Thousands of people, man. This is a very peaceful crowd. They didn't want no problems. And uh, so these cops took her down. I thought way too hard. So you can see me running towards the uh, uh, the pavel. Here I come, the white shirt lady, then it's me. I'm running to get the footage. And the way I record the cops, I always do it from a distance and I don't interfere. That's just my style, man, you know. People call me a bootlicker because I, I'm, I, I know we need cops, good cops. I see, cop, I, I see cops every day, I film cops every day. LAX, well known. And uh, I don't hate cops. But these guys, the way they treated me, uh, the guy with the nice stick, Rodriguez, knocked you down with the nice stick. And they claimed I tripped you on the curb, which was a handicap curb, there was no curb. Um, and then they turned me over, and that's when I hit my head and got the concussion. And then they were all over my back. I couldn't breathe. Upcoming video, you'll see people yelling at them to get off my back. And this is all for filming the police. And what I did, I uh, got a lawyer. I sued, a federal lawsuit. The trial was coming up uh, right before the summary judgment was granted. That in six days, it was coming up, a jury trial. I wanted my story heard. They offered me a settlement, a mediation, I turned it down, and then we got the summary judgment. But it's all based on lies. They said I went there to get arrested, which I didn't. They said I tripped on the curb, which I didn't. They say, uh, none of the cops say they touched me. They say they never touched me, and that's all in the deposition, and that will be in the description, the depositions. Um, then the, the cop named Moore, the SWAT team member, he's the one that started everything. And uh, he either erased that footage or didn't turn his camera on. You'll see with this video, throughout the video, you'll see him with his body cam. He, can, he turns it on when he wants to. He turns the sound off when he wants to. So, but he did not turn this video in when I was getting attacked. If he had it, he erased it or they kept it, they didn't want to show it. Moore was the one that started everything. Um, you'll see him throughout this video. Uh, there's a girl he stops after he deals with me and tells her it's curfew, but go a few blocks up, you'll be fine. 
he's being really nice to her. So his character is really, he shouldn't be a cop. You know, Rodriguez, more should not be cops. Even the cops were there that day because they all lied and said they never touched me. And the way the woman was treated, you know, this is a slammer down on the ground, and it's a Joy Floyd protest. That's what gets me. Uh, and a federal judge gives them a summary judgment based on lies. I did not go there to get arrested. Um, I did not uh, trip on a curb. And um, you guys actually hurt me. For filming a woman getting arrested that I thought it was uh, off the top. I mean, that's why I started taping. You know, most of the crowd left, man. The, 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 the massive crowd left. And they went back to Venice. You'll see in this documentary how we were at Venice protesting. I wasn't protesting, but I was recording the protesters. Peaceful. So if they take her away, as you see, the walking water. And I am like right behind the cops. They're all over my back. And uh, I'm nonviolent. I'm 64 years old. I have arthritis. I'm blind in one eye. I'm not really the best of uh, health. So as you see, all the cops in the background, the green on, the several cops on my back, and I couldn't breathe. I was yelling, I couldn't breathe because well, you have all those cops on your back, man. You can't uh, uh, expand your chest. You may be screaming. People say, well, you, you're talking, you must be breathing. But it's just wasting as you know you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna faint or whatever, because you can't breathe. And all this pressure's on your back. Now, I'm still lying on the ground. I have cops on my back, and I'm yelling and screaming that I can't breathe. The people there are telling the cops to get off my back. You can't breathe. You'll see that this video played regularly later on in my documentary here. This is a documentary uh, on what happened to me. It's the only way I can get closure on it. Lawyers don't want these kind of cases. Uh, if you get killed or shot, they know it's going to be a settlement. Uh, but... Even with this case here, I got a summary judgment. I can appeal it, but they don't want to appeal it because it costs too much money. And then if you do win, you have to go to jury trial. And if you win that, you don't know the amount they're going to give you. That's why lawyers do not like these cases, man. Even though it's all about the First Amendment, um, I, would, I cannot find a lawyer to pick up the appeal. The, the law firm dropped it. They fired the lawyer that worked in this case, he made some mistakes. They got rid of him and decided not to uh, do the appeal because it cost him much money. Uh, the curfew uh, was not at two o'clock. It was like four, minute, four minutes to two. And that means a lot because if you base everything on a curfew law and, uh, and you say, well, he's not media, well, fine. We, we, can, we can go with that. But you had no right to put your hands on me uh, and it made it seem like I went in this cop's face. And uh, I don't record that way. You know, my style is, go to my YouTube channel, you'll see my stuff throughout the years. I always do from a distance. I don't cuss the cops out. Uh, I'm not saying I haven't, throughout my career, cussed the cop out. That was really off the top. But that's not my style. So I am still on the ground, as you see. Now, this is from a, a guy recording an arrest with a cell phone, and I'm still on the ground. They're actually going through my knapsack, my, my backpack now. And that's a Fourth Amendment violation right there, you know, if you want to get technical about it, because uh, they had no right to put their hands on me. Uh, it could have been done another way.
They put on the uh, plastic cuffs extremely tight, you know, and uh, keep in mind, I hit my head on the ground, so I'm really dizzy. And the horrible cop, Mora, walks me across the street, dragging me, basically, and telling me I smell like piss, and he kept saying, you're going to jail, you're going to jail. Um, I did not want to go to jail during COVID, period. But I don't see how the federal judge, you know, gave them the summary judgment. You know, it's like, excuse me, you know, my footage and their footage, you know, it's ridiculous, you know. And the and the, and the worst part about it was it was a George Floyd protest. The cops were all over this girl's back. People don't get it. It's like, and I was I was taping that, you know. Uh, if the cops were not making an arrest, I would have been with the crowd back to Venice. It was a seven hour protest in Venice and the crowd went back. Nine dollar crowd. The day before though, June 1st, big riots in Santa Monica. Uh, and these cops were not around. People were looting. That's coming up in the, uh, later on in this video. You'll see all the people looting the stores. And, uh, they picked on uh, peaceful protesters. They're being sued now by Kyle Silvers and Black Lives Matter for attacking uh, peaceful uh, protesters and the uh, curfew violation they call at two o'clock. It's, it's, against, it's against the Constitution. They have a class action lawsuit. They are attacking uh, the peaceful protesters. And uh, I got it right here on video with their body cam footage. And I'm still on the ground which makes no sense. It makes no sense to have me on the ground like that. It was like a, it was like I was an animal, man. And I still have nightmares over this crap. You know, I'm, I'm extremely mad about this because uh, I did not do anything wrong, man. I was just recording an arrest. And uh, people don't actually care, man. You say, if you don't get shot, they don't care. But this is the First Amendment uh, being violated at its best. Now, he walked me across the street. He's like, he's like dragging me. The cups are like really tight, they're plastic. And he's telling me I smell like piss. Uh, I'm dizzy because I hit my head. But the way he manhandled me and walked me across the street, I just thought this guy was way out of line. And he had his body cam off. You know, he has it on at times in this video, but he turns it on when he wants to. And uh, he's just a a guy that shouldn't be a cop because uh, he lied all over his deposition. Uh, he lied, he lied, he lied. And uh, so we don't want a cop like that because he, he's going to put people in jail for life or based on lies. This is who I am, the following eclipse. This is what I do. He eats fire for a living, a street performer we're talking about tonight, who, by the way, is being called a hero. This performer stopped a man from exposing himself to children along the Venice boardwalk. Here's our Sasha Fu with tonight's Crime Buster Report. Many people fail to act even when they see a crime happening right in front of them. But Tony Vera had no hesitation when he saw a child being victimized in broad daylight. <laughs> Tony Vera entertains crowds here every weekend by eating fire. Check this out, folks. Do not try this at home. I used to be a white guy a long time ago. Here we go. He's also a hero who turned the heat on a molester who had been openly fondling himself in front of children during the street performances. No one had been able to catch him until he tried it at Tony's show. This guy had the nerve to be in my show doing that crap. You know, so at that point, I lost it. Tony was just very brave, and he didn't care. He wanted this man off the street. Tony rushed the guy in the crowd, grabbed him, and pulled the suspect away from the child. He uh, punched me in my mouth, and there was blood everywhere. But it was great, though, because at that point, the crowd got involved. Old ladies, gangbangers, church, and they stopped beating this man. It was, it was like a team effort. Tony's testimony put the molester away for three okay, years. Okay, this is uh, who Tony Vera is. From the district attorney's office. I didn't even know he was getting an award. 
I, I, didn't, I had no idea. And I feel good. Bloody mouth and all. I feel like Rocky. And while Tony says he's no hero, he wouldn't hesitate to get involved again. I got a lot of kids coming to my show. If they can't be in my show and be safe, then I don't, I don't belong out here. Tony performs every weekend along the Venice boardwalk. He says he's always got one eye on the fire, one eye on the crowd, making sure folks are safe as they watch him perform. Back in 1999, when I was recording the cops, there was no cell phones with video, so you had to have a camcorder. So I was one of the uh, originals recording the cops, but I always shot them from a distance. I never interfered. This is a pregnant woman that was on drugs. Um, it, was, it was a heavy video. But uh, this is LAPD Pacific Division, and uh, I filmed them for many years. And like I said, there was no one around doing videos. YouTube wasn't around, it was MySpace. So back in the day, there was no money involved. You did it because you cared about the First Amendment. In Los Angeles, cops arrested a cameraman as he was recording an arrest. He's under arrest! He's under, under arrest! A media! That's me as in the summary judgment. They state that I got in the office of Morris face, the guy from the SWAT team in the green. Uh, curfew was not uh, called correctly. He said it was 2 o'clock, it was like 4 minutes to 2, if you want to go that route. My whole thing was, why are these cops on this woman's back? on a George Floyd protest, a peaceful protest at that. And uh, they overreacted. And uh, there was a guy on the wall on the left-hand side. That he wasn't being bothered at all. But this is uh, Officer Moore, uh, the, uh, the SWAT team member that turns this camera off when he wants to, turns the sounds off when he wants to, because the, the video that he got here was never turned in. That would have showed uh, the brutal force they used on me, but they all stuck with the same lie they never touched me. Look in the uh, description for the uh, full deposition and you'll see for yourself. But this cop should not be a cop because he will lie, he will put people in jail with his lies. Anytime you go to court, a federal court, and you lie on the oath, you lost all respect in my book. And also uh, Officer Rodriguez, the one who hit me with the nice stick and claimed that I tripped on his curb. And it was a uh, handicap curb, there was no curb. So all I was trying to do was get this woman that was brutally taken down by the Santa Monica police. And then I got attacked myself. Brutal, man. Brutal. And uh, like I said, he got in my face and he started pushing me with his hands to get back. And it wasn't uh, curfew. The guy yelling curfew was totally wrong. He was four minutes uh, early on the curfew call. So this documentary is going to uh, give me some healing. And uh, I'm going to show you guys that like, it's not easy to sue the cops because they will lie. Not all of them now, but uh, I know the Santa Monica police. They're a bunch of liars along with the city uh, council. At the end of the video, you can see the full summary judgment. You can see all the lies they told to get this uh, federal judge to give them a summary judgment. I never knew what a summary judgment was. Uh, all I knew was my trial date was in a couple of weeks, uh, federal court with a jury. Uh, I turned down the uh, settlement offer because I wanted justice. And uh, when I turned it down, next thing I know, they get a summary judgment and my law firm quits on me because they said they spent 50 grand and they don't want to spend any more money. So they left me out just to deal with my uh, uh, depression of this case. It took a lot of me, man. I, I, never, I never got justice. A lot of folks say that I'm not media, you know. You're not media, you're not media. I have broke a lot of stories, man, uh, recording. Uh, there was a, a, an incident at um, LAX, a TSA officer, Gerardo Hernandez, was murdered by a gunman, and I got him a week before with Chris Jenner, and this video was everywhere. You know, TMZ, uh, Daily Mail, it was everywhere. And, um, this is a video I got of Stacy Kloon, the cop from the Rodney King case, the sergeant supervisor. He was driving a limo, and I got him, and it, this made national news because no one knew what he was doing. Stacy Kloon from the Rodney King case. But again, you're not media. Paparazzi's are media. Paparazzi's uh, uh, photographs, videos go to news outlets around the world. 
People don't realize that. Paparazzi's are media, you know. And this is a video I got of a, a homeless man who broke in a woman's apartment and she went to the roof and fled against this guy. And this story made uh, national news. I know, I'm not media. Uh, this incident at LAX with Rich the Kid, the rapper, had a firearm in TSA. Uh, I got that video exclusive and it was on TMZ and a lot of uh, different news shows. Again, I know, you're not media. That's, that's what they say, they say, you're not media, man. It's like, excuse me, I've been media for over 20 some odd years. My stuff sells everywhere. But again, people are so ignorant, you know, and nowadays everybody's media because they have cell phones and the media doesn't care where they get the footage from and want to get it. This is a football player that I got uh, with a gun at a TSA checkpoint. This is national news here. And of course the big one, LAPD, uh, there was a May Day festival years ago and uh, the LAPD uh, used this video to try to find these guys who attacked the cops from behind and this video was all over the world. Uh, back then I was able to shoot with my big camera but nowadays you can't because you might get attacked by the uh, protesters, so you have to lay low when you record. But it was a big story. Here's a video coming up. May Day, um, uh, demonstrators. of the Los Angeles airport fight that landed boxer Mike Tyson in trouble with the law again. Two months after his arrest, an edited video has surfaced showing the boxer's confrontation with paparazzi. He's calm at first, but as airport security escort Tyson to the bathroom, he snaps. The snapper was left bloodied and bruised and accused Tyson of threatening to kill him. The prosecutors ruled there was insufficient evidence to lay. Zsa Zsa Gabor on a stretcher. It is the arresting new image of the 93-year-old icon. Strapped to a gurney, the legendary actress headed for home with her new hip yesterday afternoon, traveling by ambulance in a four-vehicle convoy from the hospital to her Bel Air home, where she was greeted by photographers. At this is big time. They put it in the summary judgment that uh, I went to Santa Monica to get arrested. I was at a, covering a, a CVS looting at night by my house. I was do, there uh, all day, half the night, uh, and the cop told me I couldn't be out there. Any news media couldn't be out there, he said. And I told him he was wrong, and I, uh, I was doing a live stream the next morning, and I said, I'm willing to get arrested to stand up for my First Amendment right. But they act like I was trying to say it was the Santa Monica police. And I had no idea I was going to Santa Monica, man. It was a Venice protest. Here's the video. Media. Hey, you can't be here. I'm media. My name is Tony Rare. I've been covering this. Look me up. Ask the guys. But I'm media, though. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter? That's unbelievable, man. I've been covering this story. You know. 
Okay, man, my name is, check it out. Tony Vera, man. Asked around, okay, man? Okay. You know, I, 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 why, why are you so rude? I, I, I'm just covering the story, man. Is it curfew out? You need to be at home. But uh, media, though, too? I yeah. see Channel 7 out here. That's media as well. Yeah, but Channel 7 is out downtown. That that's that's not true, man. But I, I'll leave, man. You know what I'm right, saying? Thank you. But the okay. name is Tony Ray. I've been doing this 20 years, right. recording stuff in Venice. Have a good night. You know, unbelievable, man. So I was in Venice for a seven-hour protest. It was a peaceful protest in Venice. I had no idea they were going to go to Santa Monica. But uh, it was a peaceful protest. It was LAPD. Um, and I was live streaming. And I was talking about I was going to sue the cops at curfew at night. I had no idea that I was going to Santa Monica. And I had no idea they were going to pull a 2 o'clock uh, curfew that they're being sued for now by Black Lives Matter. Okay, good morning everybody. There's a big protest. A couple blocks ahead of the National Guard is there. So I'm gonna head over there. And I'm gonna work I'm gonna put in twelve hours today. I'm gonna work past curfew. And I'm gonna challenge the curfew with the people of the press fifth amendment. I will get arrested today because I'm not gonna let them just take away my rights. The other night what I had like forty cops at CBS the uh Looters. Not one cop messed with me except this one cop at the end. And uh, I left because I didn't want to get arrested, but I will get arrested today at 5 o'clock. Hey, hi, hi everybody. Hey, Bob Fellow. Yeah. Who's that? Uh, I can't read it. B something. B, 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 C. Oh, yeah, I got this, man. But I decided the other night when that cop told me to leave at night. So the cop I was, was covering totally the CBS wrong, story. I was, I was talking there. about him, so I'm the cop told me uh, he's nasty. And I'm talking about how and I should have I should have stood, stood up. And, uh, should have said, "Hey, like I was talking about yeah, the curfew doesn't uh, I didn't know I was be take away the first amendment freedom of the press." I'm part of the media. This video, and I have a right to say that. Paparazzi is a big part of the media. All the stuff goes in magazines, TV shows around the world. Judge yourself. Even the mainline media uses that stuff. So. If they want to arrest me today, let them. But I'm going to challenge that tonight. And then once this is all over, I do get arrested, I'm going to sue these people because you can't tell me I can't record. Just because you have the curfew, I'm part of the media. People say, you're not part of the media. Yes, I am. You know, all my stuff, a lot of my stuff goes on television around the world. So I'm not... I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I gotta do. But I hear the National Guards over there right now. It's a big protest. I haven't got my unemployment. George Floyd say his name. 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 George Floyd. The other night I had a cop tell me I had to leave because it's curfew. He told him I'm part of the media, but I didn't have a press pass. I didn't renew it, but I have a press pass that's two years old. But they go on my website. I, I work for X17 online. I can prove I'm part of the media. So I'm going to challenge it tonight. I remember my last protest with the LA, uh, LAX cab drivers. That was tough. That are older guys that don't get out of the cab walking. That was rough. This is a young person came here.
Nothing I'm making up. I've noticed a new upload system. They never had that before, you know. See the cops all the way down the street. Being a career criminal has nothing to do with the way he was murdered. Yes, he may have been a, a career criminal, but on, on that day, he was in handcuffs, and uh, for him to die that way, what are the cops, judge, jury, judge and jury, and executor? Doesn't matter if he was a criminal. Nobody should be treated that way. He was a porno star. So what? No power to him. If he get paid for having sex in movies, more more power to him. It's a big market for porno.
that makes me angry. I'm not trying to make you angry. I'm not trying to make you angry. We have a citywide rescue starting at 2 p.m. Thank you for your cooperation. This is the Santa Monica Police Department. We have a citywide curfew starting at 2 p.m. Get the f out! You will be in violation of the curfew. You will violate the curfew! Record with my cell phone. This is me. I try to lay low. Nowadays, if you use a big camera, you may get attacked by the protests. I cover Donald Trump protests. I cover Black Lives protests. Many protests. But it's a new world now, and they're going after uh, news media. So with the new cell phones that shoot 4K, you're able to uh, lay low uh, undercover and get some great footage. This is the way I used to record with my big camera here, but I never use it anymore because I just try to lay low and get footage, and that's the best way to do it. You don't have to have your fast pass on. I used to have a big percentage. 
some of these judgment will be at the end of the video but they lied big time on this one they actually said uh the cop with the club never touched me they got a little bit of clip of a body cam but the cop turns so you really can't actually see the hit but uh, it's clearly enough uh, officer rodriguez hit me with his night stick and knocked me down on the ground they claim i stripped over a curb but clearly he hit me with the curb hit me with the club and then he tried to hit me again but uh, they made claims that I tripped on a handicapped curb that there was no curb. And it's clearly in a video um, of uh, me falling on the ground. I didn't hit my head when I fell. When they turned me over, that's when I hit my head. They were on my back. I could not breathe. People were screaming at them to get off my back. But again, here we go. Look at it again. You can clearly see uh, him coming at me with the nightstick. And I fall. And these cops lied on their depositions. 
I tripped on the curb. City council, man, you got some good cops working for you, man. Let me tell you, man. Um, it, it was really a nightmare. And this video, uh, uh, video grab, clearly enough, you can see the cop making contact with me with the nightstick. And they claim they never touched me. Clearly right here. Uh, and look, there's no curb because it was a handicap curb. That big, I tripped you on the curb and you never hit me. Lies, lies, lies. And they got away with it with a federal judge. Unbelievable, man. A uh, federal judge, I don't believe it, man, he, uh, that he gave these people a summary judgment based on lies. It, I proved it in this video, it was all lies. Now I want to know why are all these cops are on my back going through my backpack. I want to know. It's like I wasn't a threat, but you guys use the special force on me to take me down, and you're on my back, and I can't breathe. There's a clip coming up where the people are yelling at them to get off my back because I could not breathe. From Officer uh, Moore from the Santa Monica Police Department, a uh, SWAT team member, has a body cam that he never turned in the footage of my attack because they would look bad. The guy behind them is taping, they're not messing with him. But they're being sued right now for the two o'clock curfew is unconstitutional uh, by Black Lives Matter and the famous civil rights attorney, Carol Silver. And they have a class action lawsuit on uh, violating of peaceful protesters' rights to protest. the city of Santa Monica over its response to the mass demonstrations that followed George Floyd's death. Yeah, this lawsuit is accusing the city and the police department of implementing curfew orders that allegedly violated demonstrators' constitutional and civil rights. It also claims officers used excessive force on hundreds of protesters there. The police department nor the city have commented, though, on that lawsuit. Okay, here's a lawsuit. You can look it up, uh, follow it. It's a huge lawsuit by Black Lives Matter and Carol Silver. She's a very famous civil rights attorney. If you want to follow the case up, here's all the information on uh, uh, what they did to peaceful protesters. On um, the day this happened, it was brutal. But the day before, they were being uh, looted by all these uh, protesters that were violent and smashing up property. And these guys were never around. They went after the wrong protesters, man. These were peaceful protesters. Uh, they should have been there that day when they were looting all the stores. Where were they? Okay, this is the uh, lawsuit, case number, Black Lives Matter, Kyle Silver, famous civil rights attorney, class action lawsuit. They're not going to win this one because uh, they violated a lot of people's rights, as you saw in my video. But uh, I don't think they're going to uh, win this one. They got some heavy people, uh, a lot of lawyers uh, are going after these people, man. And um, good luck with that, guys. Cal Silver does not play. So they may have got mine through lies, but let's see him get through this one. I doubt it.
anyone have your home? Charleston route to 085 from the BG, M37. 1049 Center Black Lincoln, Alley.
There's the clock. They were way early. This is a very important video. You see uh, people yelling at the cops to get off my back. But there's a motorcycle cop that uh, has his body cam on the whole time. Then he leaves. And when he, when he gets where he's going, he calls in the uh, time check. And you can see the exact time from when I fell on the ground until he calls in for the time check. This proves my theory that it was not 2 o'clock. Keep going that way. What is he being arrested for? What is he being arrested for? I just walked out of here and called the two. They're going to be arrested for it. I need to walk out of here and call the two. They're going to be arrested for it. So it is not 2 o'clock, but the video coming up next is a, a cop on a motorcycle and he keeps his camera. And when he rides away, uh, a few blocks away, he calls in for a time check. And uh, you can see from, from the, uh, the, the time stamp and the dispatch saying the exact time that they, they acted way too early. Very strong video here of the case. I gotta stay with my motor.
If you guys are walking northbound, you need to start clearing off this street because curfew's in effect if my watch is correct. Time check. 1404 hours. 1404. Curfew in effect. Everyone go home. You're Say I'm not media, fine. Uh, but the federal judge knew about the curfew and it wasn't curfew yet if you want to go that route they started like four minutes too early and the lawyers let the uh, judge know in the summary judgment he still gave them the summary judgment even though I was taken down along with the, the women she was taken down um, for the uh, curfew uh, law that wasn't in effect at two o'clock they started way too early Police chief who was fired right here. She was there that day and she was fired the way it was handled. This is Moore's body cam. He has his uh, sound turned off. He turns it off when he wants to. And Officer Moore, the one who uh, started the whole initiation, the SWAT team member. Uh, horrible guy, horrible guy. And that's the police chief that had a job. Uh, I'm seeing the uh, paramedics now. I don't want to go to the hospital, I, even though I have a concussion because of COVID, and I didn't want to get arrested by these cops. Uh, Moore walks over to me and explains to me that uh, he can still put me in jail, so I had to be nice. And actually used that clip against me, saying that I was okay and I uh, was nice to Moore. I was just trying to get out of there because he was going to arrest me. The other cop, this cop here, wasn't really nice. He, he was just talking and not letting me talk. But... Um, it was really a bad situation, and this cop gets to cut his body cam off when he wants to, and uh, it's a shame. You know, it's like LAPD, they're not allowed to uh, just cut the camera off the way this guy did. He's very selective on how he does it. He's going over now to uh, talk to the other cop. He's going over to where I'm at. I'm against the wall with the fire department. And he's talking to this uh, one cop that really wasn't nice. He didn't let me talk. He kept saying to me I was trying to push forward to the cops. But Moore actually uh, motions how the guy hit me with the nice stick, the other officer, uh, like Vegas. You can see it clearly. Uh, he's telling the cop what happened. And uh, this cop actually act acted like he liked me, but uh, he didn't. He was just like, he didn't let me talk. And uh, I was there recording the Joyce Floyd protest, a girl getting arrested. So this cop here turns it off when he wants to. It's ridiculous. Officer Moore should not be a cop, period.
Okay. What do you, for us, what do you think is easiest way out here? Nielsen totally shut down? Uh, it is. I don't know how their cars are, though. Yeah. Until we can verify. Yeah. That is the case. I'm just saying. No. The officers out there are reacting to what they have. Okay. I'm just giving I'm, you a clip. I'm, okay. I'm not trying to. I, I have heard your side of the story. Okay, I get it. Okay. But this is a volatile crowd. We're coming on with cold. So we're trying to get control of that situation, and it's a very fluid one. Even though you will accept on face value that you're with the media. Even that said, we tell you to get back, it's a lawful order. You just need to move. You can get out of the way until we can verify that. But arguing with a tactical officer... No, I, was back, I was backing up. 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 Okay. Just, just start going on, okay? I legally right now can take away your press pass and you can be under arrest. Okay. Okay, like my partner said, I'm not going to beat a dead her, uh, horse. Uh, you're giving a lawful order, you need to comply. Okay? And the best thing to do is for you to have your media pass around your neck or somewhere visible because I'm not going to take your word at face value. Yeah, because I have my big camera okay? in my bag, but I know. So, just hear him out. Okay. So, we, sir, we, 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 got we have an understanding here, here and you can walk away. We're good. Okay, sir? Yeah. All right, have a great day, sir. officer Moore riding around in a police car with another officer yelling at people but one woman had no ID or nothing and uh, he let her go he told her just to go up a couple of blocks and you'll be fine I guess if you're a pretty woman the curfew doesn't matter this shows you what kind of cop this guy is man you know he's a horrible horrible individual and should not be a cop period check out the video of him riding around you better get out of here! Curfew! Are we going? <laughs> no, we're, we're supposed to go slow as they push them. Oh, okay. I thought we were supposed the to flank. Curfew, man. I thought we were supposed to flank them over here. You mean anything? As in flank them, like, stay, like, even with oh, them. Okay. Okay. We're down temporarily for about 15 minutes. Uh, minutes Copy. Just stay here. Just stay here yeah, so we can right see here. them. Yeah, just to put it right here so everybody sees it. Up to Fourth yeah, Street. Go, stay, yeah. stay out of this area right here. Yeah, yeah, just keep going up. Yeah, yeah go, go up to Fourth Street. It, have your ID with you that has your address on it. Do you have it? No, I don't have it with me. I'm just out walking. All right. Well, yeah. go to Fourth Street and just stay away from the wherever you hear the police.
crept up on us, man. I know. <laughs> well, fuck it, we held a line. What's that? We held the line and made him go back and see. That's kind of negative. Quick, too. Squad nice. Yeah. <laughs> Move. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hey. 20, 30, your Fucking huts. <laughs> you know the the uh, you know the guy with the skateboard that was yelling. Um, so, uh, Tina comes behind us and goes, "Okay, you three, you know, okay, well, Mastin, myself, and yeah, and Salehi, goes, you guys are gonna. Uh, you really? says you guys are gonna hook him up." Uh, it's pretty clear <laughs> okay. Then he left. Got, little marine right here, hold it right there. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go. You're good. Thank you. Stay safe, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks. I will continue to make an announcement. Okay, William 3, did you copy? William 3, copy. Uh, when they do get ready to break that part down, I want to leave a squad with one and nine in that area afterwards holding the border. For a few uh, after this. Issues. The day before, there was some serious looting going on in Santa Monica. People were breaking into the stores and there was no cops around. The next day, they take it out on peaceful protesters, man. Where were they the day before when these people were looting all the stores in Santa Monica? Here's the clip. What's really strange is just how different it is from block to block. We are on 2nd and Broadway. This is the Santa Monica place, the Nordstrom's here. You can see the line of officers that are here, and they're actually people that are uh, workers right now that are actually putting plywood up as we speak. We've been seeing them going from business to business, trying to get prepared. I think they thought they had more time. But in the last couple of hours, a lot of people have come down here to Santa Monica and have started breaking into businesses. On the other side of the mall, there is a van store, and we were actually standing right there there was a looting that we heard and then officers came they kind of secured the door stood there for a while but the second that they went to, to, to another area of Santa Monica to see what was happening people came back broke down the door of that van store again and then we're just coming in from everywhere from what it looked like this was sort of planned in that people were coming out of cars stopping their cars in the middle of the street running out running into the store grabbing what they can and then getting back in their cars and going off we saw the same thing here at Santa Monica place there was a fence over on this side that actually got knocked down and people were running into the mall, getting things from stores, running back out this way. Now there are in the line of officers here, so people are not able to get into the mall right here, right now. But what I want to tell you is that just about a block from here on Ocean Avenue, that's where the peaceful protests started. We started over along Ocean Avenue and saw a line of people and talked to them and said, you saw what happened yesterday where there started to be looting, there started to be violence. Why did you come out? And they said, we know that there's a message we need to get out and we think that's important. And we think that we will be okay, that the, most of the people that are here are here for the right reasons. Unfortunately, while they were demonstrating and are still demonstrating over here, a very different story on this side of Santa Monica. There are police, as you see, lined up right behind me. We see them constantly going down in their motorcycles, in their cars, kind of going from one area of Santa Monica to the other. Unfortunately, it does not seem like there are enough of them right now. But here is what we do know. There is a curfew in Santa Monica that is going to go into effect at 4 p.m., so just about an hour from now. We're also being told by the city that to limit people coming 
coming into the city. They are shutting down all the off ramps that lead into the city, hoping that that will keep the situation under control. But right now, it is very alarming. Santa Monica Police Chief Cynthia Renault is stepping down from her position. Renault began leading the department in 2018. The resignation becomes official Sunday. In a statement, the city cited strained community police relations as contributing to her decision. Former Chief Jacqueline Seabrooks will take over the role again until a permanent replacement is found. Seabrooks led SMPD from 2012 to 2017. Jeff Petrullis for CBS LA. It was June 30th at uh, midnight, downtown LA. I was uh, working the uh, protest down there, but uh, it was a curfew and you couldn't get out of it. There was no cab, so I was stuck. And I went to a bus stop where people were waiting on the bus, but there was no buses. So I, there was a taco stand that was open. I was shocked. And I was really, really thirsty because I haven't had any water in like six hours. So I went over there and I got arrested standing in line. But the LAPD were good to me. Uh, they arrested me. I didn't have my press pass. Uh, they let me go in a couple hours. There was no violence, but this is me uh, getting arrested, uh, live streaming at a taco stand downtown LA. No way to get out of there, period. Thank you, big art television. Thank you. Hey, Mark. I was covering downtown. Um, People at the bus stop waiting for the bus. The chaos. Why is downtown? Check the bus out. There's midnight. no buses. There's a curfew, and I could not get out of there. Asked the cops. The there was nothing. Buses there was no running in and So wait, I, I, I think I see down. water. And uh, it was a bus stop. I see water. People were waiting for a bus, but it was never coming. Soda. And I saw the taco stand. It was like I couldn't believe it. So I went over there to get some Still water, open. very thirsty. And it was live streaming. Nice. I got arrested by other people. Thank you, guys. There's something open. I wasn't uh, in recent two hours. I was treated well. I wasn't like the same amount of things. This happened downtown. And, uh, live streaming. I said, I don't say that. It's very good. Turn on my news. Something God always says, Kay. So there's. Okay, thank I'll try that. That's a good idea. Yeah, I was live streaming and my uh my paparazzi boss gave me a call and told me uh to get some videos because she's actually paying me because I'm waiting on that plan, but I don't think I'm gonna get it. So uh, this is my neck of the work top videos. I can't believe this place is all unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh yeah, I'm trying. Hey, I'm just. Are you in line? Yes. Okay. Oh, I know. Come right in. Come on, I'll walk by the airport. This is bad. Yeah, they are. <laughs> he said, yeah, they are. <laughs> no, they ain't trying to hit you nowhere, Lord. No, earlier they were shooting at the, at the people. That's right. Yeah, those bullets. They were aiming for the head. Yeah, all in the face. Yeah. Everybody I knew, they were. Oh, shit. You had some friends that were fucked up? I know. You had some friends that were fucked up? You didn't see them on Facebook. You know them? No, I didn't know them personally. Yeah, I saw them. I saw them. I saw them. I saw them. What's that called? I didn't know, and then one girl, she got shot right here in the head, one girl, she got shot right here in the head. Can God look at me all? They still don't got the marshmallow. Thank you, God. That's so dusty. Uh-oh. Stop for a move. I'm okay. I'm gonna get in there. Actually, I feel reborn again. I haven't done a demonstration in a couple of years, so I do feel re reborn again. I wasn't coming. I said, I'm not coming. I stayed in bed before I knew I was on the bus. Uh, large, uh, let me have a large scope. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you have water too? Bottle water? Yeah, bottle water. Yeah, you Yes. Yeah, thank you there, Douglas. Appreciate it. 455. Okay. Come on, 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 come You tell me to go that way. Get over there. You tell me to go that way. Get over there. Put your stuff down.
Okay, here is the summary judgment, the whole thing. I, I did it as slow as I could, read through it if you want to. Uh, and thank you for watching this documentary. I hope I proved my point. Um, it's sad these cops should be uh, fired. They, they shouldn't be cops. If you're gonna lie like that, you shouldn't be cops. But uh, thank you very much for tuning in. I did the best I could with the documentary. I just wanted to show the facts on how they lied to get the summary judgment. And um, I uh, paying for the uh, the class action lawsuit that they lose because uh, all the crap they pulled and they got a federal judge to to agree with them. Check out this uh, summary judgment and the um, depositions will be in the description, and uh, it's quite interesting. But thanks again, people for tuning in on my documentary. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey, Tony, it's Gary Carlin, your attorney. I looked at the videos, it's awesome. You did a great job, and uh, you have a very strong case. And so we're working on it. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but we are definitely working on it. And uh, yeah, this is exciting. You did a fantastic job, Tony. Uh, so uh, if you have any other questions, uh, text me tomorrow. I have a deposition all day tomorrow, but I have uh, breaks during the deposition so I can uh, answer your questions if you have more questions. But we are working on your case. Your case looks very strong. All right, Tony. You take care. Bye.
My documentary, I hope the ones that are backing me and, and uh, realize that it was all based on lies and some judgment. Um, I'm uh, devastated. These cops are getting away with it. I get no justice. I wanted this case to go in front of a jury. That's why I turned down the settlement offer. The lawyers disappeared on me and left me out alone. And uh, recording the cops is not easy, but when you get bad cops, it's not a good thing. I am not anti-cop at all. I am pro-cop, people. Keep that in mind. Uh, I just don't like the bad ones. And this video shows how cops can lie in federal court and get a federal judge to go along with their lies. And as far as the city council uh, uh, is concerned, you guys should be ashamed of yourselves, man. Ashamed. I got this email from my lawyers uh, about two weeks after the uh, judge gave the uh, summary judgment to these uh, police. And it was brutal. It was Sunday morning, and he said he's not going to uh, do an appeal because it cost too much money. They never had my back, man. So when you sue the cops, folks, it's not easy unless you get shot or killed. Otherwise, lawyers don't care, period. So my lawyer sent me this letter early Sunday morning, weeks after the uh, decision by the federal judge. I was devastated. I almost had a drink. I had a deal sober. And now they just threw me out because of money. They spent all this money, but yet they don't want to get any kind of justice. Who's my very lawyers? All they care about is money. And uh, they just leave me out in the woods by myself, devastated. And the cops get away with it. Very sad.